Skiel Moza crashes off a cliff, gets back up with his bike and says, bring me another one. Riders going on the wrong side of a highway, punctures, crosswinds, bit of chaos today in Volta Catalunya. As a reminder, Michael Matthews won the stage yesterday ahead of Colbrelli. Jonas Wiederberg was four seconds behind him. Remember that, the DSM rider third, today's stage, 202k started in La Scala. They got some pretty cool ruins there. It's on the coast. It's pretty nice. Here's me and my dog walking there. Uh, but that's enough story time for now. They go north, cross the French border into Perpignan. It's, don't be fooled by this profile. It's not savage climbs. The sprinters with how far the last climbs were from the finish, like 40, 50 Ks, should be making it unlike yesterday. And it was a flat finish. And we did see that man in the break. Jonas Wiederberg, he needed five bonus seconds from the two intermediate sprints, and he needed Michael Matthews to not finish on the podium. Other weird things happening, Port not looking good on Ineos, Peacock was unwell at Milano San Remo, Lucas Plapp looking a bit off on the climbs, Nielsen Powell, and by the way, these are not steep climbs. These are, The sprinters are getting over these climbs, Bauhaus and co. Powell is not looking good either. The big event of the day was Matthias Skielmoser, crashing off the edge of this descent. It's, we didn't see it close up initially. We thought maybe there's these riders that have slid out. It was a double right-hander. You see, they go right here and then there's another right. And it seems like another rider bumped Skielmoser on Trek off his line. That wasn't him. We still can't see him in this shot until the photo, the cameraman realized, holy, there's a guy down below Skielmoser had crashed and gone off that edge. And we saw what happened to uh, Avonapold and Lombardia. If you go off that edge, you don't know what could be down below, how far the drop is. He makes it back up, and pro cyclists do indeed be built different. He, maybe the, the adrenaline's of course caught going through his veins. He waves off the medic, which you know, obviously would be great if these guys got concussion tests. And he's like, bring me another one. Bring me another bike. I got GC to defend a Volta Catalunya. And that's great and all, but I hope he got a concussion check or something. I see one of the Trek Soigneurs or their DS here was saying, calm down, just relax. But 300 meters later, he was back on the bike uh, chasing on the descent. So maybe he got checked, maybe he didn't, I don't know. Uh, but that was crazy. Thankfully, he looks fine. At least no serious injuries. That could have been a lot worse crashing off the edge like that. But the pace was chill. He got back on. Bike exchange trying to go for a sprint with Groves and defend or keep Simon Yates safe on GC. But when they came out of that tunnel, super fast highway descents. And the Pelton was already strung out 50, 60, 70 Ks. Now some road furniture in the middle. Jonas Wiederberg actually had taken five seconds in the break. Ineos on the front, and you see these dividers? Instead of the poles that left a gap in the middle of them, it actually turns into a proper concrete divider during this descent. And three riders actually got caught on the wrong side of it. And it was scary initially, because you see them here, one, two, three on the left-hand side. I thought, are they about to ride into oncoming traffic? Luckily, they'd actually cordoned off with cones that lane, and there was no traffic in that lane. So it kind of turned into a bit of a humorous uh, debacle in 35Ks left to go on this sprint stage with the riders. And I do this thing as well. I get lost all the time. I've got an old hen unit. I don't even have maps on it. And I refuse to get out my phone. And I'm like, no, nah, I'll just keep finding it. Eventually, you have to decide to just turn around or stop. And the Uskotel riders like, we got to hop the fence because there's no gap that's going to open up. Breakaway at 37 seconds. Bike exchange stage winner yesterday. Matthew's probably going to be leading out Groves, the quicker flat sprinter here. And you see bike exchange amassing on the left. Ineos pacing whilst Rodriguez has a puncture at a bad time because some crosswind started it narrowed from the highway into these even narrower than these two lane painted roads and you see here through the roundabouts that's where splits begin to happen in crosswinds and nervousness in and out of roundabouts you want to be positioned well at the front you see how narrow it is here you know who's on the front we'll see him in the heavy crosswind section in a second Naira Quintana and here 
The opposite of positioning, Simon Yates, Adam Yates is worse, I think, as well on Ineos, is involved in a crash, not a serious one, a low-speed bingle as everyone is congestion through the road furniture at this right-hand turn. He's the favourite. He was the favourite for this race just about on GC. And as it doesn't look like he was seriously injured or even went down too hard, and Bike Exchange had a difficult decision to make. Groves and Matthews, they want to go for the stage for Groves, but they got their GC leader behind, and there's splits. And so even if Yates is brought back, this is G1. He's got to make it back to G2 and then pull another 35 seconds. Meanwhile, El Maestro de los Abanicos, Nairo Quintana, is pulling on the front. So Simon Yates ain't bringing this back with Quintana looking like that in the crosswinds, right to left crosswind. He's probably mad he missed the split before TV coverage started yesterday. Rowan Dennis for Yumbo then started pulling, and despite the moto help, for bike exchange, the sprint lead out started with Quickstep taking over after Yumbo Visma. Well, for a bit, and that gap would never really come much below 30 seconds. And it's weird, these Catalonia sprints, it was the same thing last year. There's no big sprint trains. There's not much control. We've got Hofstede, Bauhaus, Groves here as the main sprinters, Milano for UAE. And after the DSM rider pulls off, Matthews, he was looking behind over and over again. Where's Groves? Where's Groves? Groves says, spark it. And spark it, he does. Perfect positioning from Groves who, well, it was a tight run thing. Maybe he would have won easier, but Bauhaus is left by Matthews with 150 meters to go and with 50 meters to go, Groves comes out of the wheel and nails Phil Bauhaus, who won at Torreno against him the other week, takes his first World Tour level win. I think maybe one of his first wins in Europe. It definitely his biggest win of his career after Bling won the stage yesterday, back to back for bike exchange and the only sore point of the day was Simon Yates losing that time, about 30 seconds in that crash in the crosswind section. Groves winning the stage ahead of Bauhaus, Hofstede, Vernon, Milano, Banyalva, Matthews, Kreisweik, Van Danabil, and Schielmos are actually 10th. The Danish lad who crashed at the start of this video. Great to see Michael Matthews. I love the double post up. And Matthews, who could have, he would have at worst probably came third or fourth in this sprint leading out his teammate, the younger Australian, Caden Groves, who's been looking for that big victory. Love to see it. Tomorrow we have the start of the mountain stages, three and four. I'll be seeing the start of stage four on Thursday. If you want to see a preview of that, it's on the lanternrouge.com.au website. We've looked at how long the times for the climb should take, the watts per kilo, what we expect from Simon Yates. Will he come back firing tomorrow? I wouldn't be surprised. Until the recap then, ciao.